Right, let's get to work. We have a pretty big episode to get through here today as we tackle the sprint race weekend here in Emila, my team, and we're going to get into it. So, first of all, the weather forecast you can see for the weekend is going to be dry across all three major sessions. Also this weekend, for the first time in a long time, we are no longer the worst team on the grid. We're officially ahead of Williams and that is a massive, massive bonus and you know, a bit of momentum and positivity moving forward. We have two major upgrades on the way which should take us level with AlphaTauri, possibly just ahead and behind Aston Martin, so more good things are on the way. And shout out to you guys in the comments. I said before I had no engine sound in the pit stops and it turns out I had pit release assist on. So I went ahead and turned it off for this episode. So shout out to you lot for pointing that out in the comments. And this weekend we're running 95 AI for practice and qualifying. Now with that said, as you guys know from the last episode, if you haven't seen it, link up in the top right. We signed a third sponsor. Well, technically a fourth if you include the title sponsor, but a third secondary sponsor if that made any sense and it was Atlantic we've gone ahead and added them to the rear wing also on the side of the side pod on the kind of top half and then also on the nose and the front wing I've also gone back to last season's wheel rims with a bit less red uh, just running the red on the inside part where the wheel nut is and yeah just a bit of a tweak and revision of the livery a bit more blue as well on the engine cover and just some small adjustments as I mentioned at the start of the season we would be changing the, the livery you know a few times and making small adjustments here and there as of when sponsors came on board and livery changes were possible so yeah that side we finished practice we scored a bunch of points and things are looking good we've got a bunch of discounts as well and we're gonna hopefully spend some money at the end of this episode on R&D points to try and make some further improvements but with that said we jump into qualifying and we're going to get straight into the action and waste no time because like I said it's a sprint weekend and it's quite a long episode so let's get into it and let's see what happens. So practice went well, qualifying I'm feeling optimistic. The last couple of races have been great. Technically Bahrain was a write off due to a lack of a you know an actual proper setup. Jeddah was great P4, Australia P13, great improvement and now Imola we scored a point here last season. Now our first lap in qualifying didn't go according to plan as we got floor damage. So it wasn't the best of starts. Uh, we brought the car back to the pits and had to go for repairs. Luckily, I went out really early in qualifying, so I had plenty of time to get the repairs done and go for two extra runs. Now, my second run was my best lap of this Q1 session. So let's see what we can deliver as we open DRS along this massive pit straight down to the Tamburello chicane spot the 50 as your reference to break and turn in we break just before that about 55 to 60 meters tip the nose in and carry that momentum all the way through one two and three now into the Villeneuve chicane at the 50 turn in and try to open up the right hander and use all the runoff curb down to toast up at the 50 again down to third gear try to take like a triangle shape kind of racing line where you kind of go into the apex and then sharpen it up on the turn in and then get the good exit up the hill up towards Piratella just about within track limits and now Aqua Minerale down the hill double apex right this time keeping it within track limits and not running wide up the hill into the Variante Alta try and spot the curb and the 50 as a reference turn in fourth gear right left on the flick use all the curb to get the traction as we have a bit of oversteer and now making our way into the Rabatsas Again, the 50 is going to be a reference break just before about 65, 70 meters. And then be patient through the two of access as use all the curb and then approach the line with some DRS. And it's going to be 115.3. And that is P16 for us. And at the time, we were out of Q1. Eventually, we got pushed down to 19th as others improved. And on my very last lap in qualifying, we invalidated, which was a shame because... The lap didn't start off great. I was about a tenth down in the first sector, but I managed to kind of gradually um, pull that back. And you can see now we're actually up by a tenth as we make our way into Rabatza. So it ended up being a pretty decent lap in fairness. And this would have given us a pretty uh, you know, good idea as to what the pace really was. And we managed to get to about a tenth and a half up and then I peeled off into the pits. So with that out of the way, qualifying done, 
Uh, we finished P20, so we're not last. We're not on the last row, so big thumbs up from me. Very happy with that. We out-qualified Paul Chair as well. As for the pace, you know, if you take into account the tenth and a half that we were out by on the final lap, that puts us above Magnussen. And then I said before, I was the tenth down in the first sector alone. So I probably could have improved by about two and a half tenths. So I do believe it would have been pretty close, somewhere in between Stroll and Sonoda. Either way, for the race and the sprint, we're going to run 98 AI. We're going to go up by three points, and that should be more or less in the sweet spot. So qualifying done, let's get into the sprint race. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting sprint. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Sainz, Ricardo, Lando Norris and Verstappen, Joe, Perez, Mick Schumacher and Fernando Alonso, Russell, Albon, Esteban Ocon, and Fettel, Gasly, Aitken, Lance Stroll, and Yuki Tsunoda, Magnussen, Martinez, Theo Porcher, and Nicholas Latifi. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We'll soon find out. Right, here we are then for the sprint race. 11 laps ahead of us. If you cast your mind back to last season, we had two safety cars in the sprint race alone and then an extra safety car in the race. So it could get pretty chaotic. The AI are usually a bit ruthless and very aggressive here. So I'm expecting chaos. However, we haven't had a safety car in such a long time. Dare I say, I think it has bugged out. So yeah, that aside, I'm hoping for a top 15 finish. If I can make that work, I'm confident I can actually get points in the race but for now though we're going to try and get a good start and then hopefully some points come from it at the end just going to get a bit of a rear burnout on the go here just to get some rear tire temp as we approach our grid slot and hopefully we get a decent start because that's going to make a bit of a difference as well if we can nail it so let's line her up lovely there we go 0 0.2 perfect let's get into it then it's time for the sprint here at Imola let's get to work Right, so away we go. It's not a good start. The AI get an absolute flyer, to be fair. I'm not going to waste any battery because we're actually pretty slow off the line in that one. That was a really bad start. Even though my getaway was fine, it just seemed like we had no momentum in the second phase. We're trying to have a look around the outside there, but I had to get out of it. Just trying to find some space. Very, very narrow circuit, of course, with these massive cars. It's hard to even really go three wide anymore. But this hasn't been the start that I hoped for. We'll keep chipping away though, we'll keep trying. Opportunities will present themselves. We just have to be ready to strike at the right time. The AI will battle a lot around here I think and we will get opportunities. Let's see, as we make our way through Aquaminidale for the first time, we may have a chance to get back past Paul Chair into the chicane. Also into Ravatsu as well, that might be an opportunity. You can see the AI just moving all over the place trying to find you know overtaking opportunities that seemed like I'm a bit down straight last speed though with this setup early on but let's see if we can make things happen here but it's not been the start that I hoped for to this sprint race and that's not going to help Norris in the pit lane nope that's one down P21 for us and yellow flag ahead. Okay, hang on, it's all kicking off here. Or whatever it was. Oh, it's a Ferrari, it's Carlos Sainz who rejoins. Just ahead of Paul Chair. Looks like no damage for Sainz, just maybe went onto the gravel, so he's probably going to re overtake me pretty swiftly, but it has already started to kick off then, so Lando with damage and Sainz in the gravel. You can see Paul Chair already struggling to hold up to the pace of the cars ahead, so. We will try to have a look at our teammate and get by here, although Sainz is putting some big pressure on. Although he just made a mistake there, so that's going to help. Let's try and get Teo if we can, ASAP, and move ahead. That will help also keep Carlos behind, which is an added benefit, at least for a little bit longer. 
Excellent chicane. Let's use the battery then. Here we go. On the inside. Lovely late breaking move on our teammate. And we get the job done. P19 then. Now we're starting to make some progress. Let's go. Latifi next. Holy crap, look at the straight line speed, my god. What? Carlos, mate. What the hell? We're done. Floor damage. That's it, it's GG. What the hell was that? I'll keep driving, see how the car feels, but... Usually under body damage is bad news. Oh wow. <laughs> oh. I'm glad that's happened now and not in the race. What a disaster. And look, there's even more chaos ahead. Perez has had an incident. What a crazy race. The AI, I swear, they're a bit crazy here. It happened in F1 2021 and it hasn't changed in this game. But our engine has gone in round four. So Lewis Hamilton wins the sprint race at Imola ahead of Max Verstappen. Charles Leclerc rounds up the podium and the three title protagonists all finish 1-2-3. Alexander Albon, P4 in the Alfa Romero from P12 on the grid. I have no idea what has happened there, but a massive result for them. And not just that, there's more bad news for us. Ocon in the points for Alpine, Russell in the points for Haas, Alonso in the points for Alpine, and Mick Schumacher in the points for Haas. Something's happened, and basically it's, you've got the top three, and then everybody else. So, let's break it down. This does mean Haas score four points, Alpine score six, and Alfa Romero score five. Missing out on the points, but you know having a pretty strong starting position for the race is going to be Gasly, Zhou Guan Yu, Jack Aitken, P11 ahead of Stroll, Vettel, Sainz down in P14, Sonoda, Magnussen, Latifi, Ricardo down in P18, Norris P19, Paul Chair, Perez and myself at the bottom. So this is bad news for the championship because Arcon, Russell, Alonso and Schumacher are all going to be starting this high up Albon as well. So if we look at the standings just really quickly... I don't really care about the drivers too much, but we're still P9. In the constructors, though, you can see Haas have overtaken us, and they're now up to sixth place. Alpine have extended their gap over us as well. So this is bad news. And of course, Alfa Romero scored five points of Albon, and he's starting P4 in the race. So this is not a good situation for the championship, and we're starting from the back in the race because of the engine penalty. So yeah, that's it for the sprint. We're now going to move into the race race. So before we jump into the actual race, worth confirming that the fouled part was the MG UK, which is okay. I don't mind that. It's mainly the energy store and the control electronics, which we only have two of them off, which I want to try and, you know, not have a failure on. If it's those that have, you know, multiple components, that's okay. So, uh, yeah, if we swap components, it is going to mean a penalty. Now, here's the thing. I like realism. So what everyone would do normally in this scenario is go all the way to number four, and take a brand new component but according to the rules you cannot do this you first of all have to use your pool of you know free non-penalty elements first before you start adding to what you already have at least that's to my understanding i'm pretty sure that's right so uh yeah we're just going to move up to level two basically and uh, take a penalty in the process because we're going to have to take one anyway so let's just select a brand new set of engine components and a new gearbox as well and get into the race we're starting last, so let's just send it and see what happens. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Leclerc, Albon, Esteban Ocon, and Russell, Fernando Alonso, Mick Schumacher, Gasly, and Guan Yu Zhou, Stroll, Vettel, Carlos Sainz, and Sonoda, Magnussen, Latifi, Daniel Ricciardo, and Lando Norris, Teo Porsche, Perez, Aitken, and Martinez. With preparations almost complete, 
Let's head down to the track. Right, let's not beat around the bush and waste no time. So P22, last place. We're gonna go for a medium to hard, possibly a medium to soft. We'll see how it goes. Again, I'm expecting maybe a VSC or maybe even a safety car. I know it hasn't happened much, but that might be a key strategy element. Like I said, the AI are nuts here, so anything can happen. Fuel-wise, I'm going point that extra, so let's get into it and let's turn this weekend around because I do believe I can get a point. This was a good race for us last year. We got a point here last season, so let's try and repeat that feat. Okay, let's get to work. Leave a like if you're excited for the race. I want some predictions down below in the comments and then go edit them once you're done watching the race and let me know if you're right or wrong. But worth noting one thing in this race, there's going to be chaos because the slower cars that are starting higher up and out of position, I think, are likely to cause a bit of carnage. So, with that in mind, let's be smart, be patient, and play the long game. At the same time, let's try and turn this one around and have a decent race. Here we go. Right. Let's get the revs sorted out. Let's try and have a decent start, unlock the sprint race. Much better. There we go. Perez in the hard tire. We are definitely way down though in terms of straight line speed. I've gone a bit hard on the wings, so we'll have to manage that as the race goes on in terms of ERS. And when we get into battles with other cars around us as we try to get past Perez straight away. He's pretty faster than us, but still he's on the hard tire, so we might be able to make it work and stay in front. No way through there on the outside, so we're going to have to fall back in line. Oh god, almost ran to the bathroom there. I want the outside line through here. Bit of debris falling off there on the sides so people are losing bits of carbon fiber as we make our way up into Piratella Perez pulls back onto the racing line so I can't quite go around the outside there it's already kicking off up ahead though Magnus and the Williams getting involved as the McLaren's are trying to fight back through let's try and go for a move here maybe on Perez up the inside Checo is still there, but we'll get the job done. He's probably going to re-overtake him in the main straight, let's be honest. We're still P21. Got some two wild scenarios ahead as Paul Chair goes to the lunge on Aiken. Lovely stuff. Love to see that from our teammates showing some aggression. That's now going to give us the opportunity to have a look as Magnuson pits for damage. Here we go, onto the pit straight. Look at the straight line speed of Paul Chair. It's not too bad, actually, on our end as we... Get a yellow into turn one. Once again, someone's gone off. Which means we can't overtake. It's Albon. That's good news for us, though. Okay, clear. He was starting P4, of course. So for the championship, that's good news. Perez trying to get by here. This all oh, just frantic action at Imola. Gonna try and have a look around the outside of Paul Chair. It doesn't quite work out. Instead, Perez is putting the pressure on him. This is really awkward. The fact it's in the hard tire. I can't judge his pace. I do feel like we're quick though. I just want a chance to kind of spread my wings a little bit. Alright, let's try and get our teammate here. Oh my god, they are going super slow into the chicane. Someone's going slow ahead. It's one of the Ferraris, I think, looking at the minimap. Let's keep the battery on. Up the inside of Paul Chair we go. Another move into Ravazza. Just taking a moment to kind of gather myself and, you know, get some composure back underneath me. But now we're going to try and make some more moves because Perez has overtaken Paul Chair. Which means he's going to put pressure on us now. DRS, of course, enabled, as we saw. I wanted to go for the move there into Ravazza and Aiken, but we didn't really have the straight arm speed of the exit out of the chicane that I was hoping for. Well, let's see then, DRS now enabled, that's going to help us just be a bit more competitive on the straight and get us out of trouble and not have to use so much battery. It's definitely not as bad as last season, that's for sure, so we can manage with this. After such an explosive start, the race has kind of gone a little bit flat, purely because now DRS is enabled, so we're all just in a train, kind of following each other. We've got enough straight line speed with DRS that I can actually just about hold on and not have to completely drain my battery. We did see Alonso in the pits just then, so we gained another place. And move on to P16. Perez is already starting to get a bit quick on that hard tyre. As the medium is already starting to fade a little bit. 
I won't defend too hard if he does start to really push for a move. At the moment, it's been okay. I've been able to manage it, but I'm not sure how much longer it's going to last, realistically. That wasn't a bad exit, actually. I might just be able to have a look on the brakes up the inside of Aiken here, which would help in keeping Perez behind for a little bit longer. Okay, we'll take that trying to not burn my entire battery reserves if I can avoid it, but it's not easy. We do need a bit of battery because otherwise we're going to get eaten up on the straight. P15 now though, making progress, and oh my god, let's see if he goes off at turn one. Battling, I don't know where to go. Damn it, I could have got by there, probably could have got Norris as well, but the momentum there just got completely shut off by the Williams. I might just have to get DRS and wait, rather than rush this overtake. If we get DRS on the TV onto the main straight, I'd probably rather have that to be fair. Although it is going to mean we're going to drop out of DRS range of Lando ahead. Which isn't ideal. But we've got a gap behind. Perez has lost a bit of time battling it looks like. So that suits us perfectly. Let's just take it easy here and try and manage that last bit of our battery. Let's see if he pits as expected. So P14 now. That's not bad. This is looking pretty decent at the moment. There's definitely going to be more chaos. I'm sure it isn't the end of it. So, as I say that, there we go. Lando Norris off. Full stuff by his teammate. So, inter team battle at McLaren. And that gives us P13. And slowly but surely, we're making our way up. I'm out of battery now. But we are closing in on the cars ahead. They can try to get by and put in big pressure on as we get our first track limit warning. If I could just get within Stroll's DRS, that would really help. Although I just don't quite have the pace to make it happen. I'm going to risk it all though and drain my battery to try and close in. I just don't have the confidence over certain corners and curbs now to really throw it in. You can see through that I was being very hesitant. Don't think I'm going to get DRS here, unfortunately. It's going to take a miracle to get it in the detection zone unless we break super, super late. Did we get it? No, we didn't. Well, in that case, we'll have to wave Aiken through. The good news about letting Aiken buy is that it will just kind of join the train up, so we'll all just kind of merge. Perez with the dive bomb into turn one. That's not going to help. That's going to ruin everything. I had flashbacks of the sprint race there for a second with science dive bombing us into turn one. Okay, luckily we managed to catch back up to Aiken, and we're going to get DRS. Only thing is we've got no battery in the reserves to deploy, so I'm going to try and get some recharge going, but it's not going to be easy. I can't need the battery to stay competitive. Still though, we've got DRS at least for one lap, so it'll just keep us ahead of Perez for now, I think, even though we've got no energy. Paul Che did a good job as well, just kind of following along, and he's in the race for now, so we love that. Just staying competitive. We're definitely more on the pace now in these last couple of races with the upgrades. Personal best on that last lap as well, which is good. Points are up for grabs, just up the road, literally. Stroll Aiken battling away here. I'm going to squeeze through. Okay, clear. Oh, that was aggressive. My god, yellow flag behind for the McLaren, but we get Aiken back and we're pitting this lap, so that could be a crucial overtake. Let's try and stick with Stroll here. We're not out of this, literally. The stroll ahead, three more further cars up the road. That is P9, so. It's all to play for. We're going to pit this lap, I think. I would stay out normally, because I think Stroll's going to stay out and Sebastian Vettel's going to pit first. But I don't want to ruin Paul Chair's race as having a good race. So hopefully Paul Chair stays out for one more. Uh, we're going to box and respect the strategy. And this is going to be an undercut attempt on Lance Stroll. So here we go. Slow it down. Bit of a safe pit entry, but that's fine. That'll do. Hard tyres ready. 50% left rear, so tyre wear is pretty high. We need a perfect stop. Hopefully, no issues, unlike the last race. Please, I'm begging you. Pit crew, let's go. Be ready. Lovely. Got the engine sounds back, thanks to you guys as well. 2.4. Let's try and switch these tyres on, man. That's going to be the really key thing here, making these tyres work. And get on the pace straight away. Pit strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now. Right, let's go, let's commit, let's waste no time. Going to get a little bit of DRS just for a, a split second there. 
as we try to get back up the pace on these tyres. Crucial that lap here. Paul Chair in the pit lane. It's not been a bad outlap, but it definitely doesn't feel fast, even though it's not been bad compared to what I usually have to deal with with cold hard tyres compared to the AI. Still got some front understeer. Paul Chair Aitken in the pits. Let's see, man, this is going to be really close. I don't want to drain all my battery. We'll have the advantage on tyre temp. There is Aitken. And we're ahead of him. That's crucial. And there is Stroll. So, undercut. Not so much. It just meant that we were in the exact same spot as before. But we're not going to suffer with the cold tyres. So, I'm happy with that. Let's go after Lance now and try and basically have him drag us along for as long as I can possibly hold on for. And then hope for some more battles up ahead, which gets back in the race, really. That's kind of it. That's going to be the strategy and the plan. Albon out the race. We'll take that, to be fair. Even though it was behind us. My god, look at the speed on the straight. What the hell is that all about? We're going to do some battery and it helps us kind of rev up a little bit. But my god, when the AR really want to, they can really turn it on and turn it up as Aiken gets out of shape. I'm trying to save some battery. That's what I'm aiming for at this point of the race behind Lance. But clearly Aiken doesn't want that to happen. So we're going to have to be careful. Here comes Aiken again. Meanwhile, we're properly in the slipstream of Lance Stroll this time. So Aiken won't get as close. Zhou has joined the battle, so let's see how this goes. I think the minute Zhou gets past Aiken, I'll get past Stroll to make sure he stays behind me. Aiken struggling massively with the exit of Tamburello. Well, that's going to be the plan. We can get Stroll whenever we need to. I think I've got about the same pace as him on these tyres at the moment. I think we kind of struggle more with the tyre wear when that kicks in. I'm going to pass Lance here, I think. We could send Lance backwards into a massive battle with Aitken and Joe. So, here we go. I'm going to try and use minimal battery as Perez pits for his pit stop this race. Now we're going to have to use a bit of juice. Oh my god, this is going to get ugly. Space, space. Oh my god, we just about go on the outside and make it work. Lance giving me minimum space or minimal space to get by, but we're crucially ahead. And now you put Perez into that battle as well with cold tyres. This is our chance to potentially pull away here and break away. There we go, we've broken DRS. I think Stroll might have damage. Who knows, either way, Perez is going to get by. And uh, we match our personal best. So I'm running at a decent pace. Perez will be in the back of me at the end of this lap. No dramas, unless something happens in this first chicane, which wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. But crucially, we've got to clean now. I can drive my own race and stay away from the battles. Perez should have the pace to also pull away. And crucially, I'd say, maybe even drag me along. Might be a bit too fast for us, who knows. But I might be able to use him and use my battery for the first, you know, one or two laps. Maybe just to try and really pull away from the cars behind and then kind of establish and, you know, guarantee that P13. Okay, here comes Checo then, Mr. Inevitable. I'm not going to fight or really waste any big battery on, on the battle because it's not convenient to us. Another decent lap. Joe when you has now moved up behind us, so he's also going to be the next one to get by here. So let's try and stick with Checo. The best I can anyway. If I can hold the DRS, that would be magnificent. Okay, we've managed to just hold on. So we'll get DRS in this lap. Did use a big chunk of the battery I have left, but if it means we stay within DRS for this massive straight, then so be it. Personal best as well. 17.6, half a second quicker. That's the difference using your battery makes over a lap and also some DRS on top of that. That's going to help us just pull away from the cars that we're, you know, trying to not battle, which is, of course, Aitken, you know, Stroll, Paul Chair, all those guys. I can now relax a little bit and uh, do my thing. Joe has DRS. I think he'll stay behind on this lap. He won't get close enough. If he does pass me, I won't defend. And I think I'm going to be quite easily able to actually stick with him looking at his pace. He hasn't really caught me up at a rapid rate. So I think I'll, he'll be a good car to follow until the end of this race. And hopefully stay within DRS and maybe recharge a bit of battery for the closing stages. So Joe closing in. We're not going to make it hard for him. He's going to be on the back of us straight away out the final corner. Pace is actually not that bad compared to the personal best. If you consider how much battery I use and also DRS. Here comes Joe. We're not going to fight. We'll let him take the right-hand side. And now we can try and follow. Let's see. I don't have a lot of battery, but I'm confident I can still make it work. 
Just got to try and have some nice clean laps and make no mistakes and we'll be okay. Personal best, that is the kind of pace I expected. I'm not going to save any battery though, I'm not going to have the chance, I need to use it to stay with Joe, but if I do use it, then I can keep up, so let's keep chipping away, laps ticking over, bit of a flag behind, Aitken and Norris have come together, safety car now would be bonkers to be fair, we get a set of soft tires on and just go for it, looks like they're both going again though, so no retirements, and we've just dropped out of the one second window from Joe, which isn't good, he is pushing, Lewis Hamilton wins in Monza. Nope, Imola. Never mind. Meanwhile, we're just trying to see if I can set a personal best. Used up all my battery remains on this last lap. I managed to save up about 55%. And we're just draining all of it now in this lap. And we are going to set a personal best as we finish in P14 here in Imola. have won it and what a great race it was and talk to me what do you think it was that sealed the win for them i think a large part of the result comes down to temperament they were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car to maximize the strategy and to stay out of trouble So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take the top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. Now this race was okay for us in terms of pace, but a bad one for the championship because aside of Hamilton and Leclerc picking up a 1-2, Leclerc just missing out on the win, Esteban Ocon picks up P3 and gets the fastest lap, which is bonkers. So a podium for Alpine in round number four, and not just that, Russell and Schumacher, P4 and P5 for Haas, a massive double points finish, not just in the sprint, but also in the race. Then we have Sainz, Ricardo, uh, we get season points for McLaren, Gasly, Verstappen and Vettel scores a point for Aston Martin, Gasly gets four points for Alpha Tauri and then everyone else missing out on the points including myself, our teammate Terra Paul who had a moment on the last lap and then Albon out of the race. So what that means for the standings is the following, Leclerc still leads, Hamilton second, so those two are going at it in the drivers championship, Verstappen not have it yet, but needs to have a couple of wins to get back in it. Ricardo doing a great job in P4. Further down, though, we're P13 as Gasly gets ahead of us this weekend. So does Sainz, so does Alonso, so does Schumacher, so does Zhou Guan Yu, and so does George Russell. So pretty much a bunch of cars getting past us in the championship. In the constructors, Alpha Tauri have drawn level on points with us, which is bad news. Haas have completely pulled away in just one weekend, and so have Alpine. So all of a sudden, it's back to pretty much last year and a battle for P8, although I'll probably say a battle for P7 is realistic. I still think we can fight for P7. Alpha Terry head for now. Not sure why, because I did get P4 in Jeddah and on count back, I got a higher points finish like position. So I don't know why they're ahead, but anyway, there's a lot, guys, for the sprint weekend. They never know. We're now going to move into upgrades. So back in the office, we have 10 days until the next race and quite a chance to get a few upgrades on and get a turnaround working. So we have the magnetic compound arriving in two days. Hopefully it doesn't fail. If it arrives, it's going to help us out massively in terms of ERS deployment. We're going to go ahead though and take care of upgrades. And I want to work on the aero side of things. Now, we've got the front wing end plates on the way soon. Can we add to that? Do we have any discounts? We do for the rear wing main plane. 11% discount, not bad. On the chassis, do we have any options? Not really. It's all to do with... Um, tire wear weight reduction or yeah this is weight reduction so not a bad option to be fair i might actually consider this um considering we do have a error upgrade on the way so 
I'm going to go ahead and get the lightweight wheel rims and then I'm going to keep the rest of the points back to purchase a few durability upgrades in a couple of moments before though we're going to make sure that the magnetic compound doesn't fail. And there we have it, it's good news. It's on the car and it's a major one. So that's going to help us a lot. With that said, we can now do these pending durability upgrades I wanted to do. So control electronics, very cheap, a massive discount. We'll take that straight away. Energy store as well. These two, of course, are the only two components that we have two of them are for the whole season. So it's convenient that we do get an upgrade on those ASAP. Gearbox is okay for now. I'm not in a big rush elsewhere. Um, I see we need to get the facility level two to improve that moving forward. MGUH, still a bit expensive. MGUK is cheap-ish, but I can't afford it. I would actually get this, to be fair, in the next episode. Because of the failure we had, I want to try and make it on that alone. But we need to get facility level two to improve the turbo and the ICE moving forward. Still waiting for upgrades from Mercedes. We've got one arriving on the 18th of July, which is quite a way away, actually. I think we're only in, like, April? No, May, so, like, two months away. So quite a while until we get an upgrade from Mercedes. Anyway, no further upgrades scheduled, so let's go to the next race in Miami. Now, I'm buzzing for this race because last year we had this race taken away from us, you know, from a lap one incident thanks to a Lance Stroll dive bomb into turn one. Uh, we were just running at the back and then our engine went pop. So I actually am buzzing to do a proper race here, which I haven't done yet, besides the 100% race I did like two months ago. So I am hoping for a decent weekend in Miami. But yeah, upgrades have arrived. We're looking decent. Honestly, the facilities have been a game changer. And I've seen you guys in the comments talking about personnel upgrades. We'll take care of that soon once we get some more cash. For now, though, this has been the key, man. Build time and quality control and fabrication all leveled up by one. It's taken a lot of cash, but it's working. And, you know, we're seeing the results of that now. We got lucky with the powertrain upgrades, both the magnetic compound and the pistons arriving. Considering we haven't upgraded, you know, anything besides quality control, they didn't fail. So that was really, really important. So again, the investment paying off on quality control there as well. But yeah, I'm happy, man. Things are looking good. The comeback is on. Upgrades on the way. If they all arrive, it should take us pretty much level with Aston Martin. So that is very encouraging. So we're looking good, guys. But anyway, I'm not going to waffle any longer. Like, subscribe. Let's try and smash over a thousand likes. And like I said, I'm on the road to 100,000 subs, guys. So any help would be massively appreciated. As always, a shout out to the members for supporting the content. And finally, check out the two videos on screen if you haven't seen them already. But that's it for me here today. And I'll see all of you in the next one. Until then, take care. And let's goodbye from me.